Today we're looking at the new Martin SC-13E. In my opinion, probably the most important guitar that Martin has designed in at least the last 20 years. Stick around and I'll tell you why. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, and you can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and comment below because we want to hear from you. If you'd like to wear some of the cool shirts that we design and make to support this channel, you can find them on our Teespring link just below uh, the title of this video. So, let's get to it. We're talking about Martin's new SC-13E. Now this guitar was introduced at the Winter NAMM show back in mid-January and it has been making a splash on social media, websites, blogs, Facebook posts, and videos. This is finally the first chance we have to get hands-on in a video, but I did spend some time with this at the NAMM show and was impressed. And like I said at the start, I believe this is probably the most important guitar that Martin has designed in at least the last 20 years. The reason that I say that, keeping in mind their redesigned standard series and everything, is because it is a clear departure from the typical design language that Martin has been using for about a century. And so we're going to get into the specifics of that, but I need to express that from the get-go. Martin is the original innovator in acoustic flat tom guitar design. They invented X bracing, scallop bracing, steel string acoustic guitars, the 14 fret neck, and other innovations. They were the first company to really create mass-produced factory high-quality acoustic guitars and bring the market really to what it is today. But I think many of us can you know, say with pretty certainty that uh, Martin has not innovated per se in a very long time. They have relied on the designs that have, uh, have made them Martin, designs that came back prior to World War II with small uh, changes throughout the years. Their biggest innovations can probably be said to be the guitars they started manufacturing in Mexico, the changes that they made to their standard series, and last year, the modern deluxe. And all of those point to kind of this journey down a road of innovating in guitar design once again. So I'm very glad to see this guitar come to light because like I said, it is a clear departure. So let's talk about what it is first of all. The body shape says enough. If you just glance at it, you go, that is different. It's not like anything that Martin produces. It's not like anything most acoustic guitar manufacturers produce. It is an S body shape. Now the way it got its name is basically kind of a swoopy design that inspired the shape. This S shape that follows the curves into an offset acoustic guitar body that's very comfortable. Not just cool to look at, at least I think it is, but it's also comfortable in the way that it hangs, the way that it balances on you just like an offset electric guitar would be. There's a lot of other innovations going on as well in this guitar, like the neck heel. So let's talk about this because this is probably one of the biggest departures aside from the body shape that Martin has ever done. Martin has uh, and, and its fans have always cried out against mostly bolt-on necks. Things have to be dovetail neck joints. So here we have a bolt-on neck with a dovetail neck joint. But it's a little bit different. This certainly doesn't look like an acoustic guitar neck. In fact, it looks a lot more like an electric guitar neck like you might find on a Stratocaster. So this hardwood neck is going into this body. And we'll get to the specifics of the body, but this is really what you came to see, right? What's going on here and to understand some of the technology. 
So not a lot has been said about this. I was very grateful to Martin for uh, doing kind of a, a video chat with me, taking the neck off one of these guitars and showing me specifically what's going on. They did ask me not to do that on video or to show you guys, and there's a reason. It's still patent pending, and so they want to make sure that's secure. But rest assured that later this year, there will be more information coming out about this. But this is the Shore Align uh, dovetail neck system that is new to this model. So you're going to notice on the back two uh, areas for the neck to attach. Now this is really just kind of a decorative grommet that protects the finish and allows a socket uh, or really an Allen wrench to pass through here and get to the bolt that's uh, lower here on the heel of the neck. And then you have this higher bolt that's right here as well. Both of these help to secure the neck in place on a linear dovetail neck joint. So what is a linear dovetail neck joint? Basically, it's a dovetail that instead of being cut so that the guitar can slide into it from the top horizontally like most Martins, it's cut uh, kind of like that in the channel so that the guitar neck slides into it. And then it's secure on this channel. Um, there's two little pieces that hold it in place and then the guitar is bolted into place. There's a lot of benefits to this. First of all, you probably can't see this as I'm holding it, but we'll do a close-up shot of this on the video for you. Inside, there is a spacer. These spacers come in different thousandths of an inch and they can be very easily removed once the neck is loosened. Uh, two clips, you pull it in, you put a new one in, and you're able to change the neck angle. That easy, that fast. Probably the fastest bolt-on neck angle change in an acoustic guitar I've ever seen. Now, the way that that works is it's not changing the neck angle relative to the dovetail, it's actually changing the angle of the dovetail that the neck is secured to. So you have a very secure connection that it's bolted on and that uh, geometry is what's changing, the dovetail's geometry. There's also a set screw inside of here. Now, that's a really cool feature and innovation on this that allows you to adjust the intonation on the guitar. So, if you find that the neck angle is adjusted or um, for whatever reason, the intonation might be off and it needs to be adjusted, you can adjust it right there through that set screw and it's going to allow the neck to move forward and aft or back and forth right here, okay? Um, upon a limited amount of room that it gives you. So you basically Martin's made sure that you can't just destroy your intonation altogether. So within a range of motion, you're able to adjust the intonation literally on the fly with this neck joint. Now, some of you are, are watching this and, and crying foul. That's not a true Martin. And I hear you. Martin did not make this guitar for you. And that is something that you should probably know going in. This has really been designed for the new style of acoustic guitar player. Now, I do think that a lot of you, if given the chance, will find a lot of love in this guitar because there is a lot to enjoy. So let's talk about the rest of it now that we've talked about the neck joint. So again, it's an offset body. The top is solid Sitka spruce. The back and sides are uh, layered fine veneer koa. So it's two veneers of koa with mahogany core. Uh, it's part of the Rhodes series, so it maps around $1,500. That's the street price for this guitar. It has a Fisherman MX system in it with a sound hole mounted tuner, so you can hit that button, look in, and tune the guitar. The bracing on this guitar, as you can imagine, is a little different given its body shape, and it's really cool what they're doing. The whole top has a radius to it, so it is conformed to a radius on the bracing that's actually a domed radius providing the right kind of tension on the top to give it structural stability but also response. The bracing is a modified X bracing pattern that has scalloped bracing on the treble side but non-scalloped bracing on the bass side. Now if you read that like I did on their website, you might think that means the bass side is more strongly based or braced. And when I looked at that, that didn't really make much sense because it would seem like there's actually less real estate here. Well, it doesn't make sense, and that's not what they've done. It's actually more strongly braced here with the scalloped X bracing. And on the base side, it tapers off to nothing before it even hits the kerfling inside, which means the base side is allowed to move quite a bit compared to the treble side, bringing balance to the sound of the guitar and the shape. The other part about the body shape and the bracing that's going on here is that in reference to the acoustic, uh, the electronics inside to give you an acoustic electric guitar, if you're performing, it's been designed to help fight against feedback so that you can have a good volume level through monitors and through house speakers while performing live and not deal with the feedback issues that are pretty common in acoustic electric guitars. 
Now, of course, you have your cutaway here, and reaching up to the top of the frets is easy because with the new neck design, there's no heel. It's very comfortable. I'm not gonna say it's transparent, but it's about as close as you can get in an acoustic guitar design. The bridge is anchored in a new domed bridge made of ebony. It's got a real nice soft kind of dome to it. Very comfortable for palm muting and an entirely different shape for Martin, as most things on this guitar. New design uh, pick guard to go with the body shape. This aperture design two-tone rosette with blue and mother of pearl. And then moving up here, we see that same uh, two-tone echoed here at the 12th fret in a bullseye between that blue and the mother of pearl. Now, you might notice something. The 12th fret, here's the, here's the body. This is not a 14 fret or a 12 fret guitar. It's a 13 fret guitar. So the idea for this is to make the whole guitar a little smaller without sacrificing the scale length. So it's still 25.4 inch scale length. The bridge is positioned for this particular body shape and bracing. And here at the 12th fret, it's just a little bit more comfortable. It's a good compromise between being, you know, the half inch longer that a 14 fret neck would be, or being too small and hitting that, uh, kind of curved heel at the 12th fret. So that's what's going on here. You have an ebony fingerboard going up to a one and three quarter inch nut. The back of the neck is a new carve. I forget what they're calling it. They called it like helix or something, I think. Um, maybe I made that up at the NAMM show. But it's basically kind of a twisted carve to it. So we've seen various compound carves coming from manufacturers. And a lot of times that's going from like a V to a C or a C to a D. In this case, it actually kind of twists in the way that they've carved the neck um, into an, an asymmetrical shape. It's very comfortable. It goes right into this nice beveled heel on the back of the guitar, making it a joy to play in the upper registers. So, all in all, I think it's a peach of a guitar. I really like it a lot, and I'm very proud of Martin for producing it. I am, before we play though, going to tell you two things I don't like about this guitar. So, all honesty, the first thing is, the feel, and this is more personal preference. When you get a chance to try these in stores, we will be receiving ours probably sometime in April, as most stores are. If you pick it up, it's going to maybe feel a little foreign. The reason for that is because it, they have put on a custom light set uh, of strings on this, which means it is strung with 11 to 52. Most Martins and other acoustic guitars that are scale length anywhere from 24 and three quarters to 25 and a half inch scales typically use light gauge strings, which means 12 to 53. That 11 to 52 gauge gives you a slinkier feel, and depending upon how long you've been playing and what you're used to, might feel a little foreign, a little too light. That was my experience when I first started playing this guitar, and I was like, what's going on? Oh, it's 11, so I figured it out pretty quick. So if I buy one of these guitars, which I might, and I'll talk about that in a second, um, I would probably put 12s on it. And Martin assured me, that that could be done very easily. Uh, of course, you can adjust the relief of the neck with a truss rod, you can adjust intonation, you can adjust the neck angle all very easily. Uh, disclaimer, the, you'll probably wanna take that to an authorized Martin technician repair center to do so they have the proper shims and so forth. So, the other thing. It's not that I don't like anything. It, let me rephrase. It's not a dislike. It's more of a want. I'm thrilled that, that Martin is doing this. Good job, guys. Like, really amazing guitar, and I hope we sell a bunch. And I want to support this design, so I've ordered a bunch uh, for launch, and I, I hope we find them all good homes. Because what I want to see next is something like an SC2080. I want to see the same technology in the standard series. So this is a road series guitar. It's solid top. It's layered back and sides. It's a fantastic guitar for the money. It's manufactured in a Mexico facility and you get a wonderful gig bag with it. I would love to see a 28 version of this made in the US in Nazareth with the same type of technology, the same designs, maybe an upgraded pickup with a hard shell case. I would buy that very quickly and add it to my collection of guitars because I really love the way that this feels, it plays, it responds, the overall design language of it and so forth. It does look non-traditional and I'm fine with that. It doesn't have to be totally traditional if the form follows function. Um, and so that's kind of my philosophy on it. You can tell me below what yours is. So without any further ado, now that you understand what's going on with this guitar, the cool X bracing you can see in the back and everything, we are going to put it through its paces and play this for you in a variety of fashions. Now, it's not a bluegrass killer. It's not made to be, but we're gonna try a variety of things on it so that you can see for yourself how good this guitar is. Check it out.
So there you go, Martin's SC13E. There's lots of other reviews about it, but you know, I really wanted to dig into the details, understand what's going on with this new neck angle for you who watch our videos and are interested in uh, a new guitar from Martin. Like I said at the outset, thank you, Martin, for being brave to put something like this to market. You know, the truth of the matter is for longtime manufacturers like Martin Guitars, Gibson, Fender, others, um, when you try to veer too far away from what you've been known for, most of the time the public turns their nose up at it. No, we just want you to continue making what you've made for 80 years. But the fact of the matter is, I think there's a younger group of musicians that don't want that. And hopefully Martin has recognized that. And they can continue making the instruments that they have made for all those years and the tradition that they've established and keep making wonderful HD28s and triple O28s and D41s and 2s and all these things that we love from them. But also, I hope you guys give this guitar and hope, hopefully, on my part, others like it, a chance from Martin. I really want to see a standard series. You can, guys, put my name on it or something, but call it a, a, an SC2080 and, and put it to market um, because I think it'd be awesome. So that's my two cents. Let me know what you think about the guitar. You've heard it, you've heard me talk about it, and you'll get your hands on it here in a few months. But comment below, tell me what you think. Is it good that Martin is innovating, pushing forward in acoustic design, making arguably what I think is probably one of the most innovative neck joints that I've seen in a very long time? Um, or do you think that they should just keep making D28s and, and stick to that and do nothing else. So comment below, let us know. If you're new to the channel, like I said, subscribe, turn on notifications, comment, like, and uh, yeah, let us know what you want us to do videos on because we're here for you. At the end of the day, whether it's an oddball shaped guitar or a very traditional guitar, the best guitar is the one that you make music on. So keep doing it and I'll see you next time.